On today's episode, we will be talking about the trans Lunatic Asylum in Weston, West Virginia. It's ranked as one of the ha most haunted places in the United States, and I think that after you watch this, you'll be totally spooked. In my channel, I typically do my makeup while I tell you a scary story, and so today's featured products is going to be the Walk of No Shame lipstick. It's the one that I'm wearing, along with the Walk of No Shame lip liner from Charlotte Tilbury. So as you can see, I really focused on my lips today and did a really simple cat eye. If you want to know more of the products that I'm using, they're actually going to be linked in the description box below. Please like and subscribe. I will be posting new videos every Monday and Thursday to give you your spook fix for the week. I hope you really, really enjoy this episode of the trans Lunatic Asylum. I'm going to take you all the way to Weston, West Virginia, to the Trans-Allegheny Insane Asylum. This insane asylum opened its doors in 1864. Um, it was there to house the mentally ill, and its walls would actually be carved out of stone. They had people from Germany and Ireland to actually carve out the stone walls that would make this asylum um, you know, patients' homes. Some crazy facts about the insane asylum is that it is actually 666 acres, whoa, and 13 buildings can be found on the insane asylum's grounds. Spooky. This insane asylum was really made to house only 250 patients, but by the 1950s, it would house more than 2,600 patients. And um, that overcrowding would definitely lead to some issues within the facility. This asylum was really made to house people who were dealing with epilepsy, drug addiction, and of course, the mentally ill. They were sharing rooms with sometimes, you know, two to three people when this building was really made to house 250 people in just isolation. People who would be patients at the trans Guinea would not only suffer from malnutrition, they would also be subject to abuse from the caregivers that would run that facility. Patients would be sleeping on the floor, on the freezing floor, with limited heat and almost no furniture. So when I say these conditions were just horrific, they really were. Patients who were deemed unable to be controlled would actually be caged. And they would live in this cage for days and um, sometimes with no food or water. This cage would really be a source of controversy because to this day when ghost hunters go to trans Guinea, they'll notice apparitions inside that cage as well as start to get dizzy, kind of spotty vision, and they definitely feel a presence or an entity inside that cage. The real horror of this building would take place when this building part of it was converted into a lobotomy laboratory. They would do lobotomies, hydrotherapy, and electric shock therapy to the patients. So we're talking about just some horrific treatment. And a lot of these treatments were created to reduce the amount of numbers of patients. So these, these weren't really put into place to help the patients. They were put in there to harm them. So Walter Freeman would perform all of these lobotomies. And these lobotomies, if you don't know what a lobotomy is, is essentially a really awful practice. Um, it's where you take a needle that kind of is as long and skinny as like an ice pick and what you would do is you would shove it right into this kind of corner of your eye and what it would do is it would sever the connective tissue um, of the brain and the frontal cortex instantly killing the patient that was experiencing the lobotomy. Luckily, in 1994, an expose um, would be published by the Gazette, and so luckily this expose was able to get in there and get pictures of this incredibly poor conditions that they were living in, the malnutrition that these patients were experiencing, and then luckily in 1994, like I said, the doors would be shut and not another patient would be admitted. So the trans Guinea Saint Asylum is a place where the paranormal researchers love to go because they're almost guaranteed to get some type of hit. People have claimed to have heard loud voices, screams, 
and uh, shadowy figures walking across the halls. On the top floor of Trans Allegheny, there was actually a really horrific murder um, of a staff worker by two patients. And that murder, um, I mean, you still get a lot of activity up on that, that floor because of that murder. Um, we don't know if they're, you know, the same entities that committed the murder, but let me tell you that that top floor, I was watching videos and there is some really, really spooky, spooky stuff that happens on that floor. One of the rooms there is called the bedpost murder room and the bedpost murder room is something that's really like gonna freak you out. You ready to get super spooked? The bedpost murder room housed two really violent, criminally insane patients as well as one patient who suffered from um, a mental disability. And the sad part is, is that the person who suffered from a mental disability, he was actually a really, really sweet human. Um, and, you know, he was only in there because he would have the occasional outbursts and they would deem him uncontrollable. And so they threw him in a room with two people that were known to be just horrific patients. And unfortunately, one night, the two violent offenders would take that really sweet patient and they would hoist him up by a bed sheet and had it tied around his throat and as they were hoisting him up they would wait until he passed out and then as soon as he passed out they would bring him back down again and they would do this multiple times until ultimately he was on the verge of death then one of the violent offenders would lay him down on the ground and would be holding him down. And as they were holding him down, the other would put the metal bed frame on his the side of his temple and then they would jump on that metal frame until ultimately that bedpost would impale his brain and kill him instantly. He is definitely still thought to be in that room. Um, there's constant, you know, interaction from him in his spirit and that's definitely one of the people who is kind of locked in purgatory inside that building. Another patient there would be Jane Harvey. She's thought to be mute um, and she actually committed suicide to avoid the horrible mistreatment that she was given um, in the insane asylum and her spirit also still lives there. Um, a lot of people who are in the paranormal community who go there to hunt ghosts will actually get a hit from Jane and her spirit. And it's really sad because of course she can't communicate, um, but it is one of those situations where you can just feel her presence of total sadness and grief. A hundred spirits are thought to be trapped in that stone building in permanent purgatory. A lot of researchers think that the reason why the people are stuck there and there's so much of a phenomenon with that building is due to something called the stone tape theory. So the stone tape theory is really something that, um, you know, a lot of the paranormal community believes in. In 1838, Charles Babish would actually create this stone tape theory. And what the thought was, was that um, elements such as stone can actually hold almost videographic um, replays of people's experiences and almost hold and tell a story. So since this building is fully made out of stone, they feel like that could potentially be the reason why it has so much paranormal activity continue to this day. So lucky for you, the trans Lunatic Asylum is open for for haunted house tours and so if you are like me and you love the creeps then you can actually go there and um, go through a tour for yourself they even have overnight options too if you really want to be super spooky I will throw the question back out to you. What do you think? Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe that they're there? And do you believe that entities can continue to walk walls of buildings even hundreds of years after they've left? Um, you know, for me, I do believe just because I've had my own personal experiences. And so I know that entities do live and do exist. Um, and I know that they can, you know, attach themselves to your soul. So you should just be very, very careful and tread lightly when you go to places where you know there's a lot of negative heavy heavy energy such as an abandoned asylum you know that's really the perfect place to to catch a 
catch something that you don't want to bring back home with you. So be careful for sure. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this super spooky tale of the trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Um, if you're ever in Weston, West Virginia, please go check it out. Thank you guys for, you know, watching me today do my makeup. I hope you have a spooky, spooky day. Bye.